The Eagles have had a number of great scramblers in their franchise history, from the ultimate weapon Randall Cunningham to Carson Wentz. Many of the best QBs in franchise history have been known for being able to extend plays. During this week in 2004, however, Donovan McNabb would blow all of those plays out of the water. During a 49-21 victory over the Dallas Cowboys on Monday Night Football, McNabb extended a play 14 seconds more than it should have been and heaved a 56-yard pass down the field to Freddie Mitchell. Later, Eagles third and 10 on their own 25. Four-man rush. And then coming through at the last moment, but escaping, McNabb rolling to the outside, coming back this way, has a lot of room, is going to launch one. He was behind the line of scrimmage, and that is Freddie Mitchell. This would prove to show how great the chemistry was between McNabb and his receivers as they would make it to the Super Bowl that season. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have me, Cigarette Stone. Oh, this you crazy mother. Hello and welcome to another edition of Sports Talk Philadelphia here on LaSalle TV. I'm your host Josh Abrams. Today we're going to be talking about the Eagles and the Sixers. With me on desk today, making his Sports Talk debut is Tori Walker. And I have the, the usuals with me, Tyler, or Tyler Small and Gia Lancey. Uh, guys, let's get right into it. For Eagles Talk, it has been a little bit of a boring past couple of weeks. The Eagles were on their bye week this week, resting up for the also oh so important game against the Patriots this upcoming Sunday. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of, it kind of is what it is with this Eagles team now. Uh, they, we, we know how inactive they were during the trade deadline. We know how much they have been struggling uh, internally this season more, more than anything. Um, but heading into this, this weekend against what was the best team in football until they lost to the, to the Ravens, how are we feeling about this, uh, about this Patriots game that's coming up? I'm not feeling too good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Tom Brady always scares me, first off, and Bill Belichick, the duo. But also, I mean, I know we're sitting off a bye week and, like, that's extra practice and stuff, but they're sitting so off. So are they. Yeah, yeah. But they're sitting off a, a tough loss. And you know how they are. They, they have good responses to that stuff. So I'm not looking too confident, but we'll see. I mean, at least we have field, home field advantage, so that, that yeah. works. I mean, um, but the Patriots are just – they're just going off the season, and uh, Tom Brady, a monster, and we'll see. Always. Yeah, I mean, this looks like a classic Patriots get right game, going off a of tough, which is probably going to be the AFC Championship game, Ravens Patriots. And with that defense, kind of got shredded by Lamar Jackson and his gang, but um, this, it's going to be a powerhouse game. It's going to be the Eagles offense, going to be not full strength, but closer to it coming into this week against this powerhouse defense of the Patriots, who if there was some crazy stat earlier that if they never took the the offense never took the field they'd be three four and one this season just based off of defensive numbers so it's just an unbelievable defense that Carson Wentz is going to be seeing yeah that's absolutely scary just that that's I never even heard that stat Tyler that's kind of nuts <laughs> the Patriots defense is obviously historically great this season but I think really for me coming into this weekend you know the Patriots obviously stand in our way but really in more ways than not we stand in our own way uh, the Eagles, as I, as I alluded to at the beginning of our segment here, have just been absolutely struggling internally. You know, those stats aren't terrible. Um, obviously, the, pass, the, the passing game could be a lot better. And you look at that number 21 and you think, oh, what's Carson Wentz doing? Why isn't the passing game uh, performing up to its standards? Well, that's because we don't really have many quality guys to throw it to. And that's where we look at the front office, guys like Howie Roseman, Jeffrey Lurie, the you know, the head honchos who are supposed to make those decisions to help us get better throughout the season. You know, we, we gave up a third round pick for, for Golden Tate last year. And while it really wasn't worth it in the end, in the long run, uh, it was a move that we made in the middle of the season to get better. And we're not making any, any of those moves right now. And it's really just more, more sickening than anything because this is not how you go about managing a football team. You know, no, at least the way that it's gone so far. And you bring up that Tate, or, um, Tate deal and it's, 
taking a chance, you know, taking a chance on a big name. Another big name that was apparently on the market this year, AJ Green. More I, than, I mean, more guys than that. More than him, but like just an example of somebody aging who used to be one of the elite receivers in this game. They took a chance on Tate, and then there's a lot more of a quality to green that you would see here that would look better in green. But just did, nothing happened. Just no, no one besides Howard coming in now, so it's, it is a shame. Yeah, and I mean, I think, like, not only in getting people, like, we're not really – taking a chance on anything. Like, I think Doug Peterson's definitely been taking a step back and, you know, not making as many play calls that I think old Doug would be. And, I mean, the only guy we have coming in is Jordan Matthews, right? And yeah, I mean, that was really the only move that the... And that is that even, like, made. a... Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. It and could be a great a move, but thing. it could... Yeah, yeah, true, true. And, it, I mean, it could have been a great move, but I don't, I don't know yet. I'm kind of on the mm -hmm. fence, so we'll see. Do you have any thoughts, Tori, on just like the the way the team's structured right now? Like, do do you have any confidence in them? Cause um, it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to. No, uh, <laughs> our secondary is just trash. I feel like um, Craven LeBlanc. I mean, it's coming back, but hopefully he would you know help our defense back against the Patriots. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, really, any kind of new body we can get in the in the backfield on defense is gonna is gonna be something. Um, but I guess. Also, at the same time, you know, as, as putrid as our secondary has been, they haven't really been the issue recently. I know um, it, it's hard to be perfect, especially as a secondary defense. You can't defend the pass perfectly. It's so hard to defend the pass in today's NFL. But, again, having somebody new, maybe not somebody new, but a new face for 2019, getting somebody in there has got to be uh, a huge help. But um, it's really important that we win this game and really every game from here on out because – Yes, the latter half of our schedule is easy. Uh, you know, guys, teams like Miami and, and the, the Redskins one more time, the Giants twice. Um, it's really those these next two games that are, the, that are make or break for the Eagles, especially given that Seattle most recently won their game of the year in San Fran. Um, I know wild card isn't really what we're aspiring yeah. for. Wild card's not really how we're going to get in the playoffs. But any kind of leverage we can gain for this playoff race is huge. And I think San Fran losing that or winning that San, mm -hmm. the um, Seattle winning that San Fran game, just kind of like, yeah. kind of dashed hope, kind of dashed it a little bit. NFC East or nothing for this team because they really, the, the NFC is so top heavy just as a conference. And there's two teams that are probably going to be over 10 wins winning the wild card. So you got to go with the worst division of football and try and get a playoff berth there and then get hot at the right time. But the Cowboys have a much more difficult end of the season. I believe they only play one team that's above five, below 500. Right. The rest of them are just obvious either playoff contenders or just legitimate football programs. So it's going to be big for them to win these next two games. It's going to be a difference maker. But they will be able to survive, in my opinion, if they go 0-2 in these next two weeks, which would not be good, of course. I think last year I didn't expect them to make the playoffs, and, I mean, they did. So I think it's a similar type year. I I don't know how if I'm feeling better about it or worse, but I think that they got to just do what they got to do. I mean, they take they have to take it one game at a time, and this yeah. Patriots game they're looking at first, and then the Seahawks. But they really, really got to step up. Like if this is if this is the next two weeks that like they really have to step up, it's it's these two weeks. So yeah, I mean, the Eagles we just got to stay focused. I mean, no unforced penalties. Like uh, just do your job, and we'll see what happens. To be honest. Yeah, and I mean that's that's always been Bill Belichick's uh, motto mm -hmm. his, his entire coaching career to do your job. Mm -hmm. um, pretty simple, pretty simple concept, but it's just so it's so weird just trying to implement that with the Eagles because um, they it's just they can't. They're I, I know they're trying their best, and I know that they're you know they're not they're not they're not doing this to us on purpose, obviously. But there's just so many problems going on internally, and I and I guess before we move on to our scouting reports, talking about this upcoming. Patriots game, I got to ask, uh, is there any, we, there, you can have concerns as a fan from the, from like the, the performance perspective, but do you guys have any concerns uh, with the locker room? Like, do you think there's any kind of turmoil going on or something that we may not know about that could develop? I think that they're on. just, sorry, I think that they're just putting too much pressure on themselves. Like, I think Carson Wentz is very much a player where like, if he's nervous, he does not perform. And I think that he just really needs to feel comfortable. Like those games that he's been standing out in this year, that's, that was the case where he felt comfortable. Like maybe not in the beginning, cause you know, we never start off good, but once he got into it and got in the groove. And I think once 
he's feeling good, they really feed off of it. So I don't think that it's like anything in the locker room, but I just think that they're putting so much pressure on themselves to perform that it's, they're just stressing themselves out. Well, I'm kind of glad you brought that up about getting off to a slow start because that's always been an Eagles issue is not scoring on the first drive, not putting up any points in the first quarter. That has to change. I mean, you can't – we can't keep sitting here and saying, oh, well, the Eagles are always known for being that. You're not going to – we're not – we're not winning a second, third, or fourth Super Bowl mm. if we continue to start off like that. It's not changing. But. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, hopefully. But you're right. I mean, Wentz is under a lot of ridicule, and it's just because of Foles winning a Super Bowl a couple years ago. So he's always going to have that hanging over his head until he starts winning big games. But without any weapons around him, he's still been able to put up a 94, uh, 93.8 excuse me, um, QBR, which is top tier in the league. So just being able to... Manipulate that with not a lot of receivers around him and just trying to overcome the deficits that he's in and the defense he's been around. It's just been a struggle for him. All right, well, that's going to do it for our uh, pure Eagles talk. We're going to move on to uh, the scouting report. And this, uh, this Patriots team is obviously really, really talented. Um, the first player we're going to quickly go uh, scope is what, who I think is the best cornerback in football. I know Jalen Ramsey still exists. You look at his numbers since he got to L.A., he has not been the Jalen Ramsey that we all know. Stephon Gilmore was an all-pro last year, uh, a huge reason why they made, it, they made it and won the Super Bowl. Do you guys have any thoughts on him? I know it's, it seems, it's, it's kind of hard to analyze the defense, really, but um, this is a very talented corner. It's just one of those things about Bill Belichick's team. Like, he literally believes that, like, they win if the person that's doing the job is the best at doing their job and not the best player on the field. So, I mean, that's just a, a pure example of that. And Gilmore, in my opinion, is the perfect Patriot. Just in the matter of him being such a, an elite defender, a pro bowler, and nobody knows his name. He, a couple years ago in the uh, playoff game against the Chiefs before Mahomes, he had one of the most unbelievable pass deflections I think I've ever seen in a football game to save them and send them on to the next round against the Jaguars. And just plays like that, he didn't even have a post-game interview that was even memorable, or even if he had one, I don't even know. So right. just, he's a perfect Bill Belichick guy, and he's just perfect for that amazing offense. Well, another, play, another player to look at with this uh, Patriots team, and for as good as they have been, they have kind of struggled with their consistency, but one of their more consistent players is Julian Edelman, and he's been around for a while, as we all know. Uh, he won Super Bowl MVP last year. He's won the three Super Bowls in this uh, decade with the Patriots. Uh, you know, I think for, some, for a receiver like him, you don't really think, oh, he's going to tear us up. But he very might well tear yeah, us up. He, he's going to tear us up. <laughs> uh, I mean, with our secondary playing how they are, are playing right now, Julian Edelman, he's just going to run right past them. So this is going to be a, a hard game, but... You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have much more else to say about that. I mean, he's literally Tom Brady's favorite. And, right. You know. He was his favorite and he's, after. Per and he's perfect for the play call because as Tom Brady's re recesses, because he's 43 years old, I mean, nobody's blaming him. What? He's been that perfect <laughs> dunk, dunk and dunk pass guy five yards down the field just to check down to just right. get them moving the chains, a West Coast offense, and he's just been his bailout for – who knows how long. Yeah. We're going to take a look at our picks real quick. Uh, we are not feeling good at all this week. Uh, the, the, the one assuring thing, and I think G and I are kind of feeling confident that it's going to be a close game, but uh, Tori and Tyler believe uh, that it's just, it's, it's going to be, I think it might be a little too much. Those scores certainly aren't blowouts by any means. You know, two score games aren't, aren't blowouts in football, but I, I, I get the sense that you guys feel that this game, that this game is going to be one of those things where the Eagles are in it, but yeah. ultimately they fall short because they don't have enough. Yeah. Um, so we're going to hope that they can pull it out this weekend, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk some Sixers. Don't go anywhere. No, you watch. You shouldn't be watching this. You should be watching the South TV. Hey, watch the South TV. You know you watch.
Man, Keegan is taking his You Know You Watch thing way too seriously. You Know You Watch LaSalle TV. Welcome back to Sports Talk Philly. We're going to get right into Sixers talk. I have the same panel with me. Uh, guys, I don't know what to think about the Sixers team right now. One of the, one of the things I want to point at, and, and I, made, I, made this, I made this graphic myself. <laughs> there is a, there is a stat. That, I know, right? There is a stat for the Sixers that just astonishes me. And it's, it's, the, it's the, I, the fact that the, this team has yet to play fully, like, as a starting lineup, this yeah, team has yet right. to play together. Yeah, yeah. And I think that is really the biggest issue with this team. You know, we can talk about the lack of shooting, the, the lack of consistent shooting, the whole nine yards, but the fact that our, the starting five that this Sixers team was hyping up so much over the summer, yeah. it just has not played together. And it's so bothersome to me because this team is so good in, in, in every facet of the game except for chemistry, which is the most important thing. So. Uh, what do you guys think of, of the team through 11 games? But that's, that's a league-wide issue in all honesty. I mean, everyone's been talking about load management. I hate it personally. But you are just going to see that. And I think it's detrimental to a team because of that team chemistry. I think that these players need to get together. They need to learn how to play because playing with Simmons is unlike playing with anyone else in the NBA. Playing with Embiid is the same way. They're just different Would players. You know you played with them before? Yeah, we played pickup together. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, you get what I'm saying. Like, it's just you need to learn how to grow that now before you start learning it in April. Do you guys have anything to offer on that? I mean, going into the season, I knew injuries was going to hurt us a little bit. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's still early. still early for the Sixers. So, we got time to, you know, bounce back. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the more uh, assuring thing than anything is that there's still a lot of season left to play. Um, I think it's also pretty assuring to, to uh, realize that the, this team is really good at home. I mean, mm. the home crowd, is re I think, is a huge reason why, uh, why we were able to go 2-0 on, on our little homestand during uh, the break between last show. But it's still concerning only because uh, the, the, the team still hasn't – I don't think the team has played up to its potential. And, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, wind back on the fact that they've only played four games together in the starting lineup. Um, but, you know, we, we have gotten solid contributions from, from guys off the bench. It just doesn't seem to be clicking right now. And so, I guess, is there a, pl is there a player that you may not, that the normal Sixers fan may not really think of that you're looking at to step up? Anybody that doesn't really stand out? Are you, are you looking for somebody else to stand, I feel stand like up? Furkan, Furkan Kort Kortmaz. Uh, he's been playing good this season. And if he keeps it up, I mean, he could beat the team and, like, go good, do good. Yeah, I mean, um, Thibault's another guy you could see really fit into that role, kind of step up as a six-man, great defensive presence. But I, that was the one ridicule that the entire NBA media had against the Sixers, is that they had that power front five, and then who was going to replace them on the bench? They really didn't have any depth on their bench. So to see a couple people step up and just, whether it is just putting up 10 points a game or picking up a couple steals, just getting minutes for this team to be off their feet, since they need games off, they're definitely going to need time off during the game. It's going to be huge. And I mean, especially with the injuries, too. Like, they yeah. are going to have to start worrying about the bench sometime soon, but I don't know how soon because there is plenty of time left. But Right. I mean, maybe, maybe they're a move or two away from, from being okay when something like that happens. Um, but, I mean, Embiid, Embiid is still going to have his injury issues, and that's kind of something that, you know, looking, looking further and further down the road, I know we don't want to look too far ahead here, but, you know, I'm not – I'm not looking ahead like in terms of trying to win a championship or trying to be the be you know the next dynasty in basketball. I'm looking f ahead because of Joel Embiid. I mean he he's so he's so injury prone, and I really don't I I wanted to believe coming into this season that he was starting to take care of himself, that he wasn't uh, he wasn't continuing to perform his bad eating habits off the court. Like you know, stuff that he does off the court is going to reflect on the court, but I don't think he's really done a lot. Uh, to fit to really fix himself as a player off the court, and I think that's real. That's going to hurt the Sixers down the line if it doesn't change. I mean, he's a very talented player, but I mean, ta talent, you know, talent loses the hard work. You know. Yeah. yeah, and I mean that's such a shame because he really like owes it to the team and owes it to himself. That's literally his job. Like, you're not not your only job is to go and play basketball. Like, I mean, you need to practice, even though you know some of our old Sixers friends don't like that. But um. And you need to take care of yourself. And he's gonna, he's gonna, it's gonna 
bite us in the butt if he doesn't, honestly. He's going to bite himself in the butt because yeah. if you see, he, he reminds me of Charles Barkley because he was the same way. Yeah, it doesn't affect you now. He's still playing. Whenever he's on the floor and not injured, he's dominant. He's one of the best in the NBA. We had talks of him being an MVP last year. And they could have those same talks this year, but it happens when he's 30 to 35 and he starts losing seasons of his career. That could be a Hall of Fame career. Who knows down the line? But if you lose those couple of years because you just don't take care of yourself because you're dominating now, you're just putting a limit on yourself. You're putting a tax on yourself that you really don't need. I mean, I feel like that's why we got Al Horford in free agency. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. the Sixers knew that he wasn't going to be healthy. So, I mean, and Al Horford has been playing good. So, if he keeps it up, then, you know, he could lead the team. Yeah, I mean, he really has been leading the team in the, in the games where we've been struggling offensively. He seems to be the really our only consistent player on offense. He's been struggling recently and kind of goes hand in hand with, this, with the shooting too because Al Horford, for as, as big of a guy he is, he can shoot the ball. He can certainly shoot the three ball. Uh, it's just very, very concerning just the, the amount of struggles that we're having as a team. Um, but really, uh, looking, looking ahead at the, the schedule, I'd like to think that these next, uh, these next three games are a little bit less, a uh, little bit less strenuous than last week. We, we had to go on a West Coast road trip last week. We know how that panned out. We were really in the middle of it last week, coming to an end. But I think these next three games need to be, uh, it, it, there's, it's, it's any given day in, in sports, but mm. the Sixers need to take care of these games. Sure. Yeah, definitely. They better beat my Knicks, for one, because they're an embarrassment. <laughs> but, I mean, what you see early, too, from these games are in their last four games, two of them were one-point games. So yeah. you get to get a little bit of that early season energy. You get to see how they're going to close out games, because that was a huge problem for them last year. And one of them on the road against Denver, I mean, you just ran into Jokic, who just made a remarkable shot. I don't know how it went in, but... And then the other end, closing it out at home. That's where home court comes in, and learning to steal those tight games on the road is going to be make or break for them come once again June because everything is a ref everything now is a reflection of what's going to happen in the playoffs yeah I mean I think Philly all Philly sports just loves to do that to us you know <laughs> those one point games at the end overtime shootouts whatever I mean they kill me with that but and I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon mm -hmm. uh, it being early season or postseason but you know I I think that they do need to like learn how to play under pressure and you know we're seeing that a little bit but they got to make those shots Early I mean, on. I feel like with their latest game, they played the Magic, I think. Yeah, yes, yeah. last night. Yesterday. And, like, the Magic, like, 15, 15 game loss. And the Magic, nobody's talking about the Magic. So, like, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I'm right. just like. Hey, Vucevic had 25. Gordon yeah, had 18. Yeah. Gordon's just known for being a dunker. And exactly. He Embarrassing. Showing to us. Yeah, yep. you're right. Yeah, it's just concerning um, losing games like that. Again, we didn't have Embiid, so that's yeah, obviously yeah, a still. Yeah, you know, the Sixers are like uh, the Sixers are like a cruise ship without the, <laughs> without the captain, without Embiid. Um, it, I mean, like seriously, it is. No, I mean, right. That's why we were saying Embiid was an MVP last year because he they they looked they looked lost. And the entire team's without. just built around him. Yeah. Just having that big of a force inside. You could still play bully ball with him, and he could spread the floor right. and take you off the dribble. So, I mean, he's a perennial all-star. Right. Now, before we move on to Fast Five, is there anybody out there on the free agency market that you guys think the Sixers could sign mm -hmm. and could at least improve the team, maybe make it deeper? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's I, I just don't see how they continue on the season with the same exact roster. they got to make a few moves. Um, I feel like we need a shooter, for sure. Yeah. Uh, whoever's in a free agency market right now. So. Can we get JJ Redick back? Mm. <laughs> That'd be nice. Oh, One of his free agent now, though, J.R. Smith. <laughs> oh, yeah. Never know, but yeah. I would never want that, actually. But, I mean, <laughs> he could shoot the ball from anywhere on the court. You That's never the thing. Know. Like, you, wouldn't want, yeah. you wouldn't want his, oh, his three-point potential on the floor? <laughs> I mean, he has the potential of dropping 30 to 40 a night, but he also has the potential of costing you a finals yeah, game yeah. because he didn't know how many timeouts there were. He just wait, especially going with someone like Embiid who could kind of have a little bit too much fun with him. I kind of see right. that a little dangerous. All right, well, that's going to do it for Sixers Talk, and uh, we're going to hope for a better week this week, uh, better than two and two. Uh, let's go to Fast Five, and we're going to come to Tori first. Uh, Tori, the NBA is so even this year, and it's so much harder to pick it, but uh, who is your, who are, who's your finals matchup? Oh, this man. Year? I mean, I want the Sixers to go to finals, but I mean... The way they're looking right now, I don't think they're well. But uh, the Celtics, I think they're like number one in the East. Yeah, yeah, sure. we're, so, their, we're their only loss. And the Lakers, they're number one in the West. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it might be the Lakers and Celtics in the finals. 
a lot of history behind yeah. that one. That's <laughs> just great. a little, just a right. little bit. Yeah. Uh, Gia, Colin Kaepernick's making some some noise now again. Mm -hmm. um, private workout Saturday, all the all that fun stuff. Do you think it's legit this time around, or is it another PR stunt? I honestly wish it was legit. I mean, I feel like they need to give him a chance, and you know, I mean, he's talented, obviously. Um, but I think that since they're hosting it on a Saturday. And since not all the teams were in, or all the teams were invited, but like before when they usually do this, it's just specific teams are invited that really have an interest in him. And it's usually like on a weekday or something. And so I just think that it's not as legit because of that. But I wish that they would give him a chance because I think that there's some teams that need a quarterback sure. or and could use him. And I mean, I know other teams don't want the drama part of it, but I think that you should take talent over drama any day. So. Sure, and I, I, hopefully teams can realize that sooner rather than later. Uh, Tyler, we're going to come to you. This Houston Astros thing that's going on is really unprecedented because of the, because of the, uh, let's not get him started. <laughs> the, the technology that they're using is really what makes it unprecedented. What's your just overall reaction to this whole thing? Um, I know the fans at home can't see this, but we have one, two, three, four, five cameras. The Astros are probably using one of them as well <laughs> because, I mean, it's, one of the best parts of baseball is the unwritten rules and it's the secretism behind teams just having a runner on second, stealing signs inside. So right. it's just, it's a mockery of it, just using technology and I think they should face some repercussions. Yeah. Um, Gia, we're gonna come to you. Evansville beats Kentucky, who was ranked number one in the, in the poll. Uh, who do you think is gonna be the number one, the new number one now? I don't know. I mean, Michigan State's number one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, right. I mean, they might stay. I don't really know. I mean. College basketball, obviously, you could never tell what's going to happen, which right. I thought was so cool with the Evansville game. And it, like they've never, they it's, it was a matchup for the first time ever. Right. So yeah, it was really it was cool. cool. Yeah, it was awesome seeing that. Yeah. And then the last thing we're going to ask is, uh, Tyler, we didn't talk about the Flyers on the show today, but you get 30 seconds to just give us your general takeaways <laughs> from the last uh, from the last show. Yeah, you know what? They've been great at home. They're six one and two after just losing to the Capitals the other night. So Travis Konecki's been unreal. Uh, has one of the top points in the league. Ivan Provorov, guys like that, a goalie matchups, just been great all around. All right, well, we're going to certainly hope for some positive Flyers results as well as all Philly sports results. Uh, that's going to do it for this week on Sports Talk Philly. You can catch us on Twitter at Sports Talk LTV. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Sports Talk Philadelphia. And you can also find us on YouTube along with all other LaSalle TV shows there. We hope you enjoy the weekend. We're going to hope for an upset with the Patriots. We'll see you next week. Go Birds.